Hi all and welcome. So today we're looking at module three of the Solar Loan course. This is our lesson four and the module is functions and modules. Now once again you are working most at your own pace so just use these lessons as a bit of a guide. So there are people now that are onto, that, onto module four or module five and so on and they're just working at their own pace and that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you screenshot your work when you've when you've finished and just hand that in. And for those that are slightly behind, same applies for you. So we are only expecting one hour of work. So once you've finished your hour of work, hand your screenshot in and you're done. So this could mean that you are still completing module two and that's that's absolutely fine. I'm I'm really not worried. As long as you're as long as you're taking your time and you are you're doing the tasks and you're getting something out of this, that, that's absolutely fine. So one hour a week of this work. Now, the same rules apply, so you should be reading all the text including the yellow boxes and you should be trying the code examples in the playground. If you do these things, you, generally um, students are finding it really, really easy. It's when you try and rush through the task and you don't read the text that, that students are, are, are struggling. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, it's not a race and there really is no pressure to kind of complete as much as you can. So just use these as a guideline. So let's have a look what we're up to today. Just give me two secs while I just switch this over. So we've completed the basic concepts and control structure and now we're on to this functions and modules. So we can click on, click on here. Now, within the hour, I suspect you're gonna be easily be able to fit, finish between four and five of these. These five here took me about 25 minutes. So hopefully you, you should be okay with that. Um, try not to use up all your XP. You probably will need this towards the end of this module. So I'm currently at 104. The only one that I feel that you might struggle with is this one here. Before I show you the solutions for this one and kind of walk you through, through this question, I also want to answer a question from last week. Now, on one of the questions last week, we had um, we had to input three pieces of information. This isn't the question. This is the one we're going to look at today. But the answer was this else and colon. Now, a lot of people were saying, hey, I can't. I've got the first two right, but it just won't complete for me. So once you've put in, say, for instance, the if here and the colon here, a lot of people were putting the else in without the colon. And obviously it won't work. So it's looking for that correct formatting. So if you are struggling with that particular question, just make sure you put that colon in. Um, that was the main the main one from last week. So this week, Let's have a look at returning from functions. I do think that this will be the one that a lot of people find the hardest and, and the, the kind of the way the code is structured for this can be quite confusing. So what we're doing here with this function and, and once you read the other once you read the other lessons, this will make more sense, but we're actually trying to find the largest number from two numbers. So this X value and Y value is actually taken from two existing numbers. And the existing numbers that, that we first use is these two here. So four becomes the X value and seven becomes the X comes the Y value. And then when it runs again, when it tries to run this X, it changes. So this eight becomes the X value and the five becomes the Y value. So once it does that, before it will print the statement, it actually needs to return whatever that value is. So let's let's just read through this and see if we can work out how they got this result. So it says here, if x is greater than or equal to y, then you're going to print the x. So you're going to print this 4. Else, you're going to print the y. So if you look at this, we've got 4 for the x and we've got 7 for the y. So what we need to ask ourselves is 4 greater than or equal to 7? Um, if it is, then we're going to print that. Otherwise, we're going to print that. So because 4 is not bigger than 7 and it's not equal to 7, we're obviously going to print the y. So the y value is this value here, this 7. So And that's the one it's printed. So let's have a look at this one here. So we've started a new variable of z. And it says, right, z has a value, so an x value of 8 and a y value of 5. So before it will allow us to print this variable, it first has to run the function. So then it puts 
the eight here and the five here. So it says, right, if eight is greater than or equal to y, return x. Sorry, if eight is greater than or equal to five, return x. So eight is definitely bigger than five, so it returns this one. And that's why you've got the eight there. Hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, it can get quite confusing and, and it does help if you run this in the, the code and you actually change the parameters. So for instance, if I change this parameter to a three, that should give us a different value there once it runs. Yeah, and the same the same goes here. If we change this one to a ten, oops. If we change this one to a ten, you should get um, a different value there as well. So you get the ten value, um, and it's just the way that the numbers are being passed. So it's always no matter what numbers you're trying to put into here, it's always trying to find the the biggest value to return. Um, that will make more sense once you've completed the other lessons. So obviously don't start with that one, complete these ones first and then hopefully it'll make more sense. But I, I felt that once you get onto the question, that was where you were probably going to, to struggle most, which uh, shut me out. <laughs> um, oh yes, because it's here. Um, it was, that's where it was going to confuse you most. Also, yeah, you do need to return back to the to the length values as well. So that is gonna be something like len there. And then you can have to enter the values. I'm not gonna do that for you. I'm gonna let you guys work that bit out. Um, so I hope that was useful. So we just finish up. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, if you have any feedback, if you want to make sure help, um, just leave me a comment in the assignment so we can track the, the conversations and make sure that everyone's kind of getting the work they need. Um, other than that, have a great week and I'll see you next time.